All right, we're now at less than 7.4, and we're going to be sketching the graphs of rational functions, functions that are in fraction form. And there's quite a bit, bit of information that uh, you need to think about as you sketch these graphs. So uh, let's just jump right in, and we'll talk about some uh, key terms, key concepts. Um, it's really a process, a lot of things that you've got to think about uh, as you go through and uh, come up with these graphs. So first of all, let's talk about the idea of vertical and or horizontal asymptotes. We, we know what those are. We've seen them in other graphs. But I want you to be, understand how, when you're sketching the graphs of rational functions, how and when and if uh, you will have these appear. So starting with the idea of vertical asymptotes, I'm just going to go to this example, and I'm going to look at the denominator, and uh, you can probably see that there are two numbers that I could choose, two specific numbers, that if I plug those in for x, the whole denominator would become 0. Uh, what is one of those numbers? 2? Okay. If I let x be 2, then I get 0 times 5, which is 0, okay? So x equals 2, in other words, causes a problem because division by 0 is not mathematically possible. Well, there's another number out there that does the same thing. What is that number? Negative 3. If both of these were negative 3, this would be negative 5 times 0, and negative 5 times 0 is 0. And division by 0 is not mathematically possible. So right off the bat, I've identified two numbers that cannot be inputs in this function because of what they do. They cause 0 in the bottom. So from a graphing standpoint, what I've said is that on this graph, I'm just going to do a little rough sketch, on this graph that we're about to draw for a function like this, any ordered pair that has an x-coordinate of 2 is not going to be on the graph because x cannot be 2. So that eliminates every single ordered pair in existence that has an x-coordinate of 2. In other words, I'm talking about every ordered pair on this particular line. The dotted line basically says that there are no ordered pairs on this line that are going to be on this graph if x cannot be 2. Because every single ordered pair on that line has an x-coordinate of 2. And that's going to be true over here for this vertical line called x equals negative 3. If I can't let x be negative 3, then that rules out any ordered pair that would have x coordinate negative 3. Or in other words, it rules out this entire vertical line. So this is the idea behind a vertical asymptote. Any number that makes the denominator 0, so we'll go ahead and fill in your blank, values, that's just another fancy word for numbers, that make the denominator zero. So that's going to be one of the first things that you spot, and I'm going to walk you through the process, but it's kind of where can I not graph, and that's going to be any numbers that make zero in the denominator. Okay, I chose this example because it illustrates how sometimes you need to factor before those numbers become maybe more obvious. So I'm going to suggest, actually I'm going to recommend strongly, you do all factoring first. So I factored the denominator so it makes those numbers easier to see. I've got two vertical asymptotes for this graph. So give me the equations for those vertical lines that represent vertical asymptotes. Um, Jonah, give me one of those x equals 4, that would be the equation for one of those vertical asymptotes. Uh, Emma, what would be the other one? 
Very good. So if I were graphing, one of the first things that I would do is go ahead and draw these two vertical lines to show basically these two lines represent off-limits ordered pairs. None of those ordered pairs can be part of our graph. Okay, sometimes the numbers that make zero in the denominator, if there are any, they're not obvious. So far, they've been pretty obvious. But if they're not obvious, then just take the denominator like this and make it equal zero and solve. If you can't just see it or factoring helps you see it, obviously I can't factor this. So let's just solve this little equation and see if there are numbers that we could cause zero with those numbers. Well, let's see. If I subtract 5 from both sides, and then if I do the square root of both sides, what have we learned about the square root of a negative number? It's going to use what special number? The number i. The number i is not real. It's not a part of the real number system. So if you're solving the denominator and i becomes the result of that solution, then you know that there is no possible way to make this zero with any input. I mean, you can think about it. Just start doing inputs for x, and will it turn this into zero? It's not possible. So if it's not possible, then you're not going to have a vertical asymptote. Vertical asymptotes are only numbers that we plug in for the variable to make the denominator become zero. Any questions so far? All right, let's switch gears and we'll talk about horizontal asymptotes. We've identified vertical lines that represent off-limits areas. Are there any horizontal lines that do the same thing? Well, horizontal asymptotes are completely different the way we find them. And I've given you a, basically a note at the top that helps you know how to find them. It's all about comparing the degrees of the top and the bottom of the fraction. And if you don't remember what that means, the degree of a polynomial, like this numerator, this is a polynomial, the degree of a polynomial is always the largest exponent for x. So the degree of that numerator would be 2. The degree of the denominator would be 1 because there's an invisible 1 exponent there for that x. So what I'm showing you here is the situation of when the numerator degree is larger than the denominator degree. When this happens, you will not have, you won't have to worry about drawing a horizontal asymptote. Doesn't exist. Anytime the numerator degree is larger than the denominator. Okay? Another possibility is that the degrees are the same. The degree of the numerator is 2. The degree of the denominator is also 2. You just look at the highest exponent. So what about this scenario? when the numerator degree is the same as the denominator. Well, this one's the one that might be a little hard to remember. So here's how it works. Whenever the numerator degree and the denominator degree are the same, you're going to basically draw the line that will be the fraction. I'm going to show it as a over b. And a represents the very first number of the numerator and b is the very first number of the denominator. So really, you're going to draw a horizontal line that will be this. In my problem, my example here would be the line y equals 3 over 6. Well, 3 over 6 reduced is 1 half, which would be a better way of showing it. So the horizontal line, y equals 1 half, would represent a horizontal asymptote. So, again, you've got a lot to think about in these problems. And the more you do it, the better, easier it gets. Look at the degrees. When they match, you're going to make a fraction top lead coefficient over the bottom lead coefficient. Okay? 
So just to make sure we get it, uh, I'm going to make up another example. All right, so that's my numerator. What's the degree of the numerator? Four. Denominator? Four. Do I have a horizontal asymptote? Yes. Uh, what will it be? Y equals two. You basically just make a fraction out of these lead coefficients. Eight divided by four is two. So you will draw a line, a horizontal line, that will represent that equation. Okay, so far so good. You know whether or not you're going to have a horizontal asymptote. If you have numerator greater, then you don't. Degrees are the same. You just found out how to make it. Now the only other possibility is the denominator degree is bigger, or I'll show it as the numerator is less. The numerator degree here is 1. Denominator degree is 2. Whenever this happens, in this scenario, it's always the same line. It's the line y equals 0. Well, drawing the line y equals 0, meaning the line where all the y coordinates are 0, well, that's the x-axis. That's another way of saying it. These are synonymous. y equals 0, also known as the x-axis. You would just literally draw a dotted line right on top of the x-axis on your graph there. Okay? Questions? All right, we're about to put all this into practice. So let's go through the process of graphing. You definitely are going to need a calculator in just a little bit. So if you don't have one, uh, go ahead and grab it. I'll wait for you. Okay, um, your, just about all your problems, you have 10 graphs in this assignment. Every one of them are going to pretty much work like this, and I've given you a step-by-step -step process to work through. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is find the zeros. Another word for zeros is x-intercepts. Will my graph cross the x-axis anywhere, and if so, where? That's, that's good information to know about the graph. Well, I've given you uh, a tip here. Uh, solve the numerator equal to zero, and I'm going to add also, I'm going to add to that after canceling, if I can. It's not always possible, and in this case it's not. If I could factor and cancel, I would do that right off the bat, but there is no possibility for factoring here. Obviously, I can't cancel. Remember, you can't cancel terms, only factors. So I'm going to take the numerator, and I'm going to make it equal to 0, and I'm going to solve it. Well, that's pretty easy. If I do the cube root of both sides, the cube root of 0 is 0. So I'm going to have an x-intercept where x is 0. And that's obviously right here at the origin. So I'm building, I'm gathering some information that will help me eventually come up with a complete, pretty good sketch of what this graph looks like. I know it's going to cross through that point. Okay, now let's identify, now that you understand how to find asymptotes, let's start with the vertical. Do we have a vertical asymptote? Carson, do we have a vertical asymptote or no? And if we do, tell me where it is. Don't? Okay. What makes you say no? Well, that's all about horizontal asymptotes. Degrees of the numerator denominator, that's how we find horizontal. So maybe we'll look back on the vertical asymptote slide. Remember how we determine vertical asymptotes? Okay, so 1 would make 0 in the denominator, so I'm actually going to have a vertical asymptote, which will be the line x equals 1. So let's just draw a dotted line representing x equals 1.
Okay, now let's check for horizontal asymptotes. Uh, Jay, do we have a horizontal asymptote? How come? Okay. Okay, so the degree, the degree of the numerator, which is 3, is greater than the degree of the denominator, which is 1. And whenever that happens, we won't have a horizontal asymptote. Very good. All right, so now uh, we've basically identified a point that my graph has to go through. And we've also identified that this graph is really going to be into, in two separate parts because this is like a fence, and my graph is going to be contained on either side of this dotted line. So it's our job to find out what does the graph look like on the left side of this dotted line, and then we're going to figure out what it looks like on the right. So now we're going to do a little table, and it's just a matter of using your calculator and cranking out some points. Okay, obviously I don't need to do zero because we already have the point zero, zero. So let's figure out, let's generate an output for input negative one. It'd be nice to know where the graph is where x is negative one. So with your calculator, if you're uh, using your calculator, it would look something like this. Negative one cubed divided by parentheses, negative 1 minus 1. So uh, I need to make sure because usually mistakes, the most commonly made mistakes are people just not using their calculator correctly. So I want to make sure we get a consensus. Everybody doing this? Okay, so what do you got? 0.5, everybody get 0.5? Okay, so let's plot that point. Negative 1, 1 half. All right, that's good information. Now let's try negative 2. So again, you probably already know this, but if you've already got this keyed in, all you have to do is replace these inputs. You don't have to retype the whole thing. Okay, Ben, tell, let us know when you get that. Okay. Two and two-thirds, 2.6. Negative two, one, two, and about right there. Okay, one more. Let's try negative three. And... Please don't just take our word for it. If you're not getting these numbers, raise your hand and let, let me or somebody help you out. This is crucial. Carla, what would you get for negative three? Six and three-fourths. Everybody agree with that? 6.75? You able to get that? I'm not seeing any response, so yes? Okay. Negative three, one, two, three, four, five, six, and three fourths. Well, I'm pretty confident that that pattern is going to continue. I do know this there is no possible way it's going to ever return this way and cross x because we found out there's only one zero, there's only one x intercept. Can't cross x more than once. So I'm going to go ahead and draw this much of my graph showing that it's just going to, well, that was bad. It's going to continue going in this direction forever. And actually, since I know I'm never going to cross the x-axis again, and I know that vertical asymptotes mean I always trace them, I, I follow them, but I never touch them, approach but never touch, then I know that the rest of this graph is going to have to do this on the left side. So we've got the left piece. Now let's work on the right. Question. That's a great question. It really doesn't matter 
it really kind of depends on where your vertical asymptote is. I would always approach it this way. Uh, and sometimes you'll have more than one vertical asymptote. But I would just think of starting, this is kind of ground zero, and just build from there. Okay. We started here, and we're working on the left side. We already had zero, so then we just go to the next available one. Just work from the inside out. That, that makes it easy. So to work on the right side, I'm just going to input two. Okay, we're going to work on what is it doing on the right side of this barrier. So change your input to positive two. And that should be positive eight. If you do positive three, what's that, Jade? Positive three? Thirteen and a half, so we're going further up. As we go to the right, it looks like, I'm just going to estimate, I'm not going to change the units, but we'll say it's going up here. Well, this is kind of interesting. Um, you might think that it's going to cross through these and then follow this forever, but what's wrong with that line of thinking? What's wrong with this picture? If I cross through these and then I just say I'm going to follow this forever, approach but never touch, What's wrong with that? Well, I don't know. Uh, I haven't tried anything in between. But what am I doing here? Okay, and should I? How many places are we supposed to touch the x-axis? Once, and we've already identified that. So should I touch the x-axis again? There's only one zero, there's only one x-intercept, so that can't be right. I'm touching the x-axis twice. So it looks like it's going forever and ever this way. Um, what do you think then it should be doing? I mean, i got a gap. Should it be going this way or up? Well, if you're not sure, let's pick something in between. What would that x be in between? Okay, let's input 1.5. Did you get it? 6.75. Okay, so for 1.5, one, two, three, four, five, six, and three fourths. Did everybody get 6.75? All right. So I'm coming down, and let's do something in between that. What would be in between 1 and 1 1.5? 1 1.25. Okay. Try that. just to give ourselves a good read. What'd you get there, Jackson, for 1.25? Okay, so now I'm starting to go back up. I went down to 6.75, and in between, I'm back up to seven, almost 8. So now I'm feeling pretty good that Three, four, five, six, seven. I've kind of bottomed out here, and I'm going to start going back up forever this way. Kind of a skinny V, tracing that vertical asymptote forever. But do you get the idea of how it really depends on the problem as to how many inputs you need to get a good picture of what this graph is going to do? 
but it pretty much starts with where can we not graph, where are we going to be crossing the x-axis if we are, and then we're going to rely on tables from there. Okay, let's try this one. So I'm going to make a note. Uh, it hasn't occurred yet, but if you can factor, you need to do that right off the bat. Factor everything if possible. So this numerator can, pa and can factor as x minus 3 times x plus 2. So let's find out if we have any x-intercepts. So Wes, uh, do we have any x-intercepts? Otherwise known as zeros. Okay. All right, we got zeros, uh, x equals 3, x equals negative 2. So we're going to be crossing, that's where the zero, the numerator equals 0. So that we know we're going to be crossing x at these two places. Yes. Well, uh, we factored it first, and then you can just let each of your factors equal 0 and solve. All right, now let's see if we have any asymptotes. We'll start with the vertical. Are there any vertical asymptotes? Ben, what do you think? Okay, vertical asymptotes are numbers that we plug in to make the denominator zero. So we are going to have a vertical at x equals negative 1, dotted line through x equals negative 1. Do we have a horizontal asymptote, Jonah? How come? Very good. Numerator degree is bigger. All right. Uh, we've got a graph broken up into two parts a part on either side of this dotted line, so let's start doing some inputs, outputs. All right, so let's build the left side. I already know what negative 2 input gives me. We got that point, so let's do negative 3. All right, so if you're going to use your calculator for this, you really have a choice. You can use the red or you can use the factored blue. It really doesn't matter. Let me show you how it would look using the red in your calculator. We're going to input negative 3. So make sure that uh, your entire numerator and your entire denominator are enclosed with parentheses. That's, that's pretty important. Anybody got a result? Can somebody give it to me? What do you get, Jackson? Um, somebody, what'd you get? Somebody. Who's got it? You got it? Negative three? Was everybody able to get that? Sounds familiar. Did you get negative three? If you didn't, we need to figure out why. Because this is pretty big. If you're getting the wrong outputs, then obviously your graph's going to be off. Uh, double check the most common made mistake. I think, did anybody get 15? That, that's come up quite a bit. I think the most commonly made mistake today is uh, the parentheses. So if you'll just key it in exactly like that. And you're using negative 3 for inputs. Did somebody do it right? Ben, did you get it right? Do you, Okay. All right, so let's plot uh, negative 3, negative 3. And let's just keep on going to get a pretty good picture. Uh, just 
go up to your calculator and replace negative 3 with negative 4. Once you get the function keyed in, then it's pretty easy to replace the numbers. And if I remember right, that's negative 4.6667, I believe, or we'll just round it to negative 4.7. Everybody get that? All right, negative 4. Almost to negative 5. Did anybody not get that? Okay, um, we're feeling pretty good that uh, this is the direction that this graph is going, and we know that as we're coming from negative infinity, that, well, I should have gone through that point, but we're going to be approaching but never touching that vertical asymptote, and then we're just going to sketch the direction this way that it looks like it's headed. And now let's work on the right side. Well, zero input, we don't need a calculator for that. If you just think, if all my x's disappear, if you input zero, that means all of these x's are gone. What's that leave? Negative six over one, which is negative six. So I have a y-intercept of negative six. Um, we just inputted, inputted, <laughs> good word. Uh, we put zero in for x, and basically it just makes all those disappear. And just for clarity, um, let's do something in between. Uh, let's just input one, just to see what it's going to do in between those two points. So Carson, give us that output for input one. Negative 3. 1, negative 3. And I'm just going to connect those dots. We'll be tr following, approaching this vertical line going forever down. And it looks like it's, I keep missing those points, but it looks like it's going to be doing something like that on the right side. Okay, you get the idea? Making sense? Okay, uh, we're going to, you don't have this, you're not going to cover oblique asymptotes. Your notes look a little bit different than mine. This really, um, I think, is Roman numeral 2 for you. Is that right? Point discontinuity. So this will wrap up the lesson. We're almost there. Hang in there. Um, a hole in a graph is... It appears like this. I'm going to have a line, but in that line, there's a, there's a value for x that cannot be used. Again, because it makes zero in a denominator. So you'll, you'll see the official graph, but it, it typically looks something like this. It's a little circle where it, it's an interruption in our graph because that x value causes problems division by zero. Well, here's how you'll know if you have a hole. These are pretty easy to discover. First of all, factoring everything, just like we said earlier. Now, at first glance, you might think, hey, we got a vertical asymptote because we just talked about numbers that make the denominator zero are vertical asymptotes. Well, that's only true if we don't have factors that can be canceled. Do you notice how I can cancel these? So now I don't have a vertical asymptote because I'm able to cancel out that denominator. So the number that did make zero it actually makes zero in both the numerator and the denominator. I'm going to have uh, what is known as a hole 
at x equals positive 4. You're going to have a hole if you have matching factors that cancel each other, numerator and denominator. It's going to represent a hole. Okay? Um, pause. This. So let me show you how uh, the graph process looks a little different uh, when there is a hole involved. You obviously want to factor everything that you can. So this numerator factors, there are factors of negative 12 that add up to 4. So it's, it's kind of tough for people to make the transition. We've just focused so much on finding vertical asymptotes, and you might think right off the bat, hey, we got one. We've got a vertical asymptote at x equals 2. Well, actually, we don't because we can cancel those matching factors. So instead of a vertical asymptote at x equals 2, we have what is known as a hole. If you're able to cancel factors, the number that would make 0 with those factors represents a hole in the graph. So the hole is one. Is only the one. Yes. And so what turned out, what looked like was it was going to be a really complex graph. Once we factored it out and canceled, it became this. It's just the graph of a line, y equals x plus 6. That's not difficult at all. You did that at the beginning of graphing in Algebra 1. Y-intercept of 6 slope of 1, and we don't have a straight edge, so we'll just kind of freehand this. So this would be a line that goes forever and ever and ever, except where x is 2 on that line, which would be right here, it's going to jump over that. There's going to be a little hole there because we cannot let x be 2. x cause 2, x cause 2 cause 0 in the denominator. And so it can't be allowed as an input. So we're going to have a line that looks like this. And this is the classic example of a hole. So if you drew a vertical asymptote here, you need to erase it. You will never have a line that crosses over a vertical asymptote. That's not possible. Okay, let's try this one. Once again, Look for opportunities to factor. We can factor the numerator. We can go ahead and find the zeros, but we need to cancel first. If I cancel, what's my zero? What's my x-intercept? Well, if you let x plus 4 equal zero and solve it, you're going to get negative 4, right? You're solving the numerator equal to 0. So it should be negative 4. All right, so I know my line's going to cross the x-axis at negative 4. Do I have a vertical asymptote? No, because my denominator canceled. I've got matching factors, so this represents a whole. I'm going to have a hole in my graph at x equals positive 4. So essentially what I'm going to do, I don't even need to do an input-output table because when I cancel these, I'm going to be graphing the line y equals x plus 4, and I'm just going to insert a hole in the line where x equals positive 4. Jonah. It's going to be when you have these matching factors that cancel, just take the number that would have made th those factors equal to 0. Like this, this matching factor is x minus 4. If you put it equal to 0 and solved it, that'll tell you where the hole is going to be. And the fact that you have canceling factors tells you you've got a hole. Well, that's an x-intercept. Uh, once I canceled... I took the part of the numerator that didn't cancel and made it equal to zero, and I know my graph has to cross the x-axis there. So let's see. Let's graph the line y equals x plus 4. 
y-intercept 4, slope of 1. And you can see that, yeah, I'm going to be crossing the x-axis at 4. And let's go ahead and put our hole in. And so it's going to be a straight line going forever and ever, but it's going to jump over x equals 4 on the line. So you get to x equals 4, yeah. Okay, so a lot of stuff in this lesson. Vertical asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes, and holes. you got to be good at finding all of those. Do you have any questions about any of those? I know it's new stuff. You've never seen it before, but uh, per practice your homework with purpose. Ten graphs. Did you all get graph paper? Okay, I'll take care of that.